National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the chase. There is always the hunter and the hunted, the pursuer and the pursued. It may be the voice of authority or a race with death and destruction, the most relentless of the hunters. There are times when laughter is heard as counterpoint and moments when sheer terror is the theme. But always there is the chase. And no one joins the chase with more determination than the fortune hunter. You see this item right here in the obituary column, friend? It's only five lines wide, but there's a story behind it that you could stick between the covers of a book. The story starts with a guy named Keith Claiborne whose real handle was plain old Artie Snide. He grew up tall, dark, and handsome, with a smile like a toothpaste ad, and only one ambition, to marry a million bucks. He didn't care who she was or what she was, as long as she had the Mazuma. And while he waited for a wealthy widow to chase, he polished up his manners, until his style was smooth as silk, and just as creepy as the worms that make it. His big chance came on a plane bound from Chicago to New York, where Artie found himself sitting beside something fair, fat, and pushing 50, but rolling in mink. One glance at the rocks on her fingers had Artie drooling like a horse. The first thing you know, he turned on the charm. Molars, mustache, and all. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes? Would you mind very much if I smoked? Oh, I know, of course not. Thank you. I um, hope you don't think I'm being rude or inquisitive, but I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd autograph this envelope for me. You want my autograph? Yes, Miss Ellington. Oh, my name isn't Ellington. It isn't? Oh, I know. Oh, I thought you were Dorothy Ellington, the moving picture star. You would. You look so much alike. Oh, no one's ever told me that before. It happens to be true. Well... Oh, please forgive me. I I realize we're total strangers, but I... Well, I just couldn't oh, help... Oh, don't apologize. It, it's quite all right. Is it? Well, of course. My name's Keith Claiborne. Uh, the, the Chicago Claibornes. Uh, I'm Eloise McKendall. Miss McKendall? Uh, Mrs. Oh. I'm... Uh, I'm a widow, you see. A widow? A widow at your age? Well... Uh, you I... poor, poor child. Please accept my condolences. You needn't feel so sorry for me. My late husband, uh, George McKendall, died some years ago. I've uh, gotten over it. Did you say George McKendall? Yes. The copper magnet? Did you know him? I believe he was a close associate of my brother's. Uh, the, the Claibornes are steel. Well, how interesting. This is an amazing coincidence. Why, we're, we're practically old friends. Uh, well, yes, we are, aren't we? <laughs> uh, you're going to New York, I take it? Uh, for a visit. My home is in Montana. Well, then you must let me show you around. Oh, no, I couldn't impose. Impose? I never consider it an imposition to put myself out for a beautiful woman. Why, Mr. Claiborne... Please, call me Keith. If you want to see the real New York, I'll show you places... Artie's family was in steel, all right. His father was a riveter. But lying was part of Artie's stock in trade. And he was second to nobody when it came to cooking up a yarn. Well, for the next two weeks, he gave Mrs. McKendall a whirl. He put himself into hock to get the dough to show her around. Artie had nickels instead of red blood corpuscles and a cash register for a heart. But it didn't show when he dolled up in his white tie and tails and became the handsomest heel in town. <laughs> Oh, you dance divinely, Keith. Only because I have an angel in my arms. 
happens. Oh, how you do carry on. I've never been so happy in my life, Eloise. Neither have I. It's too bad it has to end. End? Yes. Uh, come on, Eloise, let's, let's sit down. Well, all right. Now, now what's this all about, our, our friendship ending? Well, I'm going home, Keith. Oh, no. But I must. But why? Aren't you happy here? Oh, of course I'm happy. I've never been so happy in my life. But I, I can't stay on forever. I have my friends back home and the house. The, the house? Oh, it's so big, Keith, and it worries me. I, I don't see why I live in a 27-room mansion at all. I guess I do it because I'm sentimental. The house was George's favorite place for so long. Twenty-seven. Mm. Eloise, you can't leave me. But I have to go home sometime. Do you want to ruin my life, my darling? What? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, that, that just slipped out. But that's how I feel. Oh, Keith, please. We've... We, we've only known each other two weeks, and, and you... you I act as can't if we... help myself, Eloise. You're... Ravishing. My life had been meaningless before I met you. The same old round, the same old pursuit of financial gain on Wall Street. I have everything I need now, all the money in the world. Yes, I have everything. But real happiness, Eloise. Oh, you poor boy. You say that like you mean it. I do. But don't worry. You are bound to find some sweet young girl a, a lot nearer your age. A lot oh. nearer my age? Well, you're just a child yourself, Eloise. Oh, I'm a lot older than you think. Well, what has age to do with romance? Oh, gee. Don't, don't turn away from me, my sweet. But just one kiss, just... No, not here, not... Well... I, I, I beg your pardon. My emotions carried me away. Keith. Keith, take me home, please. At once. Just as you say, dear Eloise. He ran into a snag at that point, all right, friend. He didn't think the old girl would be so coy. But that didn't stop my boy for long. When you hunt for an easy fortune, you gotta have a bag of tricks. And Artie had a million. Goodbye, Keith. When that plane leaves the ground, my darling... It carries my life along with it. Oh, I, I, I wish you wouldn't hold my hand that way. People may be watching. Goodbye, Eloise. Remember, I'll be thinking of you always. And when you think of me, I only hope you'll shed a little tear for the joy we've known together. Oh, Keith. <laughs> stayed on the ground as her plane took off, but he didn't stop the chase for a second. First, he wired the airport at Chicago. I'm miserable. Come back and let me live again for just a little. Kansas City. You can't do this to me, Eloise. I'll kill myself, I swear it. And all points west. I love you. I love you. I love you. That finally broke her down, and he got himself an answer. Well, you... you can visit me if you like. I'll reserve a room for you at the local hotel, but you must promise to behave. One hour later, he was heading west on a super constellation. The old campaigner marching back to the wars. Eloise. Oh, Eloise, I've missed you so. Oh, now, Keith, you promised to behave. And I'll keep my promise. Oh, you're so good to me, Eloise. Oh, how you carry on. Your friends on Wall Street would be amazed. Yes, they would be. But they wouldn't laugh. They wouldn't dare. I could wipe out half of them with one snap of my fingers. Are you really that much of a financial power, Keith? The Claibornes have always been wizards when it comes to money. That's why they've always been unlucky in love. 
Well, I'm having a party tomorrow at my home. It's going to be a quiet affair, just 20 or 30 people, my closest friends. I want them to meet you. Will any of your relatives be present? Oh, I have no relatives, Keith. Oh, no? No. Why do you look so pleased when I say that? It's just that I want you all to myself. Oh, Keith, dear. Eloise, will you consider me a suitor for your hand? Oh, my goodness. We, we hardly know each other. I feel I've known you for years, my darling, <laughs> and I can make you happy. Let me take you away from all this on a cruise to South America. Oh, dear, I, I, I don't think all this is very wise. You've got to listen to me. You're alone in this world, and so am I. Oh, Keith! Don't, I... don't give me your answer now. Tomorrow night at the party. But I promise you, if your answer is disappointing, I don't care what will happen to me. Oh, you... You really love me that much, Keith? That much and more. Until tomorrow night, I'll be waiting. And I know you'll make me the luckiest man alive when you give me your answer and your love. Obvious? Sure. Sickening? And how? Only Eloise wasn't sickened. Hardy was getting to first base fast. And he was calling up his sluggers for the final inning... By nine the next night, Eloise's 27-room bungalow was full of people. But Artie was conspicuous by his absence. In the first place, he wasn't taking any chances that somebody at the party might spot him for the fraud that he was. And in the second place, he was getting ready to play his trump card. Uh, another martini, John? Oh, please, help yourself. I, I uh... Uh, we won't be serving dinner for 20 minutes. I, uh, I'm waiting for another guest. Oh, that's the telephone. Uh, please excuse me for a moment. Hello? Eloise. Uh, yes. This is Keith. What's happened, Keith? Why aren't you here? I... I couldn't face it, Eloise. Couldn't face what? Your refusal. But I'm in my hotel room, darling. I, I I just called to say goodbye. Goodbye? We'll never see each other again, my sweet. Oh, Keith, what are you saying? What have you done? Goodbye, my darling. And remember, I loved you to the last. Keith! Oh, oh Keith! <laughs> He raced over to his hotel room like an ambulance driver while Artie set the stage. And when she got there, she found him draped over the sofa with an empty pill bottle in his hand. The pills were only saccharin tablets. Artie liked to watch his figure. But Eloise thought he had taken arsenic. Oh, how could you, Keith? How could you? Love does strange things to a man, Eloise. Oh, you must let me get a doctor. Oh, no, no, no. I'll be all right. Oh, but... Just stay here like this oh. with your arm around my shoulder and promise me something. Oh, anything. Anything at all, my poor boy. Say that you'll marry me as soon as I'm back on my feet. Oh, yes, gladly, Keith. Oh, gladly. I, I would have said yes to you long ago if it hadn't been... Don't, for... don't, don't talk anymore. You've made me very happy. We'll take out a license in the morning, Eloise. We'll be married as soon as we can. Oh, yes, Keith. Yes. Eloise, I'll never forget this day as long as I live. The ceremony was brief, and the happy couple spent their honeymoon in Palm Springs. As a wedding present to himself... Artie bought 18 suits, 20 pairs of shoes, and charged them all to his wife's estate. He followed this up with a snappy convertible. But his past caught up with him a few days after the bride and groom came home. 
Good morning, pet. Oh, uh, good morning, Keith. Uh, sit down and have some breakfast. You know, we ought to serve this English style. Kippers on the sideboard and so on. The elite should live in an elite fashion, don't you think? Uh, this mail is yours, Keith. For the mail? Oh, yeah. And what's this, some bills? I think so. Oh, but there's been a mistake. I, uh, I had these items charged. Charged? To your account. I'm a bit far from home at the moment, dear, and a little short of cash, so I thought you'd take care of it temporarily. Oh, but uh, I can't, darling. I beg your pardon? Well, I, I said I, I can't. You can't what? Pay these bills. What are you talking about? Oh, well, dear, I, I, I don't have any money. You're joking, of course. Oh, no, I'm not joking at all. But your late husband. Oh, George. Oh, when he died, he was bankrupt. He was what? Oh, don't jump like that, Keith, darling. You'll spill coffee on your necktie. Never mind my necktie. What's all this hogwash about bankruptcy? Oh, I suppose I should have told you before, but you never asked me about money, and besides, I knew you were so rich. Never mind me. What about George McKendall? Well, the copper vein petered out some time before George died. Oh, his partners warned him, but he kept pouring more and more into the mine, and... Finally, he lost it all. Then I've been swindled. What? I've been married under false pretenses. You married me for my money? You don't have any money. Keith, all I have is the house. What? This, this house? Yes. You own it free and clear? Well, yes, but... Darling, you, 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 you must forgive me. Well, I, I, I can't understand your attitude, Keith. It wasn't your money it... I was interested in. After all, I have so much of my own, but... For a moment, I thought my beloved had deceived me. That she had married me for my money. But I don't understand... The house is proof enough, my sweet, that your story was authentic. After all, to own a home like this one, so big and so expensive... But how could you have doubted me, Keith? I... I don't know, Eloise. I must have been insane. It's my conception of you as being perfect that appeared to have been momentarily spoiled. Oh. Please, please, let's forget the whole thing ever happened. We'll, we'll call it our first lover's quarrel, shall we? Well, whatever you say, dear. I'll take care of these bills myself, of course. I'll, I'll wire my New York representatives to... Oh, great Scott. What's the trouble, darling? I almost forgot the merger completely. Merger? What merger? American Concentrated Incorporated is merging with United States BB and C, my dear. It's to be the biggest deal since 1885. Oh? I've, I've been offered a chance to buy in. I wired my partners to do so. You, you, you did? Every dollar I own is tied up because of it. Oh. I won't be able to put my hands on any ready cash for months. But uh, what will we live on? Well, well, my beloved, what did you live on before we were married? Well, there was George's insurance. But that, that's all gone now. My jewels aren't real, so I, I couldn't sell those. I see. What would you say this house is worth, Eloise? Oh, it cost George half a million to build. But the houses this size have lost their market value, or so I've been told. The only offer I ever received came about a month ago from a man in Los Angeles... He wanted to convert it into a small hotel. How much did he offer? Oh, $167,000. Really? But I'd never sell. What do you mean, you'd never sell? Oh, I really couldn't. Oh, I see. What's the trouble, Keith? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. But you look so unhappy. Do I? Oh, darling, have I said something to offend you? It's just that you don't trust me, Eloise? Don't trust you. I'm in a spot right but... now financially, as I told you, yet you refuse to lift a hand to make things easier. Well, if I had any money, I'd give it to you, darling. Would you sell the house? But I can't, Keith. You can't? No, I... Oh, I'd have sold the house a long time ago if I could. Heaven knows it's much too big for me. Then what prevented you? My husband. But he's dead. Oh, he specified in his will that the house must never be sold or the money goes to charity. George wanted me to live in it, always. Well, that's the most selfish gesture I've ever heard of in my life. Oh, don't be angry, Keith. You've got to live here until this house rots or it burns down over your head. Uh, suppose it did. Uh, suppose it did what? Burned, right to the ground. Is it insured? Oh, naturally. For darling. its full value? 
just about. If the place was destroyed, Eloise, would you lose the insurance money, too? Oh, no, no. But that's impossible. What is? This house burning down. It's built so solidly. And George installed a lot of fireproof gadgets when he built it. Such as what? Oh, the entire basement and all the servants' quarters have sprinkler systems, for one thing. What else? Oh, the rugs and the drapes have been treated. Oh, it would take a lot to burn this mansion to the ground, Keith. Would it? Mm-hmm. Why are you so interested? <sighs> Only for your sake, dearest. I want to make sure that you're always protected against harm. Oh, you're so thoughtful, Keith. Um, where is the fire insurance policy? In the library safe. We'd better get it out. Why, whatever for? It's not a good idea to keep it here. I'll put it in the bank. We, um, can't be too careful, can we? Only a dizzy dame with an open heart and a mind like a vacuum tube couldn't see through Artie Snipe. Now Louise was just that kind of a dish. While she sat around like a lovesick kitten, Artie was making plans. And one of those plans included a visit to a gin mill on San Francisco's waterfront. And a certain leech-faced character who had been recommended by a mutual friend. Is, um, your name Fingers? Why? I'm Keith Claiborne. So what? I'm also known as Artie Snide. Again, so what? I'm a friend of Dipper Crowley in New York. You know how to dip? Intimately. He told me where to find you. Here's a letter he sent me, um, more or less of an introduction. Uh-huh. That letter's okay, so you're okay. What can I do for you, Zaddy? I understand you're a specialist. Could be. At arson. I started a couple of bonfires in my time. I've got another one for you to kindle. Where? In Montana. What's in it for you? Insurance. And me? 10000 in cash. What kind of setup is it? Twenty-seven rooms, no neighbors within half a mile. I'd have done the job myself, but I've heard these insurance inspectors are too smart. Not for me. How's the joint built? I brought a picture. Let me see. Here it is. Mm-hmm. There's a sprinkler system in the cellar and in the servants' quarters. Sprinkler systems are my meat. And the drapes and carpets are treated. I've never seen a treatment yet for phosphorus. Phosphorus? Is that what you use? One of my gadgets. The joint is uh, wood from the first floor up, right? That's right. With a stone base. When you want it done? As soon as possible. Well, I got an auto job on for Wednesday, a bond gimmick for Thursday night. How's a Saturday? Saturday's fine. The house has got to be empty. I don't mix my trade with homicide. Catch? Naturally, it will be empty. I'll take my wife out while you're at work. You got a key? Here you are. How about the help? We haven't hired any help since our return. The place will be deserted when you get there. Check. That's all. Except, uh, I want a G note on account. But, a thousand dollars? Yeah. I, I don't have it right now. But I'll have all your money for you when I collect the insurance. You better have, mister... Because I can specialize in double crosses, too. If you don't want to look like a candle on a windy night, you'll pay up on time. Don't worry about it. Then I'll expect you on Saturday night. We got a date. The following Saturday, Artie took his bride to a movie. And there was a glow in the sky as they walked homeward after the show. The fire was a dilly. As the engines roared up and the firemen went to work, there was another and warmer glow in Artie Snide's larcenous heart. 
Oh, Keith, it's awful. There goes the second story. Oh, but how could it have happened? Everything was fine when we left the house tonight. Accidents will occur, Eloise, my oh, sweet. Are you sure it was an accident? What do you mean? Well, don't you think some vandal may have started it? Some, some dipsomaniac, maybe? Oh, you mean pyromaniac, oh, darling, and well, I uh, doubt if that's possible. It was probably spontaneous combustion that did it. Oh. Oh, what? Just, just, oh. I uh, took the precaution of removing that fire insurance policy to a safe place, Eloise. Wasn't that clever of me? Uh, yes, very dear. We ought to be able to collect on the policy within two weeks, just as soon as their inspectors check the uh, incident. Oh, Keith. Keith, someone's coming over here. Oh, where? You see him? He's walking our way. Oh, it's a policeman. Are you Mr. Claiborne? Yes, sir. The owner of this house? That's right. You better come with me. No, what for? You're under arrest, Mr. Claiborne. Under arrest? On suspicion of arson and a possible involvement in a charge of homicide. Arson? Oh, what does he mean, Keith? There was a firebug trapped inside your house. A man named Fingers was wanted in seven states. Oh. He's badly burned and he probably won't live, but he's made a statement. You want to know what he said, Claiborne? Keith. Never mind the details. I think I have a pretty good idea. Oh, it's Don't a... worry about it, Eloise. It doesn't mean a thing. I'll get myself a lawyer and I'll be free inside of 24 hours. Wait for me, Eloise. I'll be back. That was eight years ago, friend. And eight years is a long, long time. Eloise waited as long as she could. And then she got pneumonia one winter afternoon and quietly passed away. That's what reminded me of this story, friend. It's Eloise Claiborne's obituary I spotted just now in this newspaper. How do I know so much about Eloise and her fortune-hunting hubby? Well, you see, my name is Harry Snide. I'm Artie's cousin. But there's a topper to this story, friend. Something that Artie probably just found out. Eloise had a $500,000 life insurance policy, and Artie was beneficiary. Happy? Sure, Artie's happy. They gave him 30 years on the arson wrap, an extra 20 for contributing to Finger's death. But why shouldn't he be happy? He's got his fortune at last. He'll be the richest man in the state penitentiary for the rest of his life. In the animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted. Hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, cat and mouse. We in the topmost species have also joined the hunt. But who is to judge precisely which of us are hounds or foxes as we enter the chase? <laughs> The Chase was created and written for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Klee. Featured in the cast were David Gothard, Arlene Blackburn, and Ralph Bell. The Chase is directed and transcribed by Fred Way, Fred Collins speaking. Next week, the story of a man with a dual personality. Two people living in one and each fighting for control during The Chase. Tonight, it's Adventure with Counter-Spy and Dragnet on NBC.